Before we start, I want to let you know a full list of materials are in the description section of this video. Start by putting a standard dry fly hook on your vise, and start your thread about an eye length back from the eye of the hook. Then bring your thread back to the bend of the hook. Now we're going to want to select an appropriate sized brown hackle. In this case, I'm looking for 16. Alright, that one will work. Strip off the barbs at the base of the feather, and then clip off just the very end that bulbs out. Then tie this feather in at the back of your hook, with the dull side facing up. This orientation ensures that the feather fibers point forward, which is preferred for this fly. Then bring your thread back to the bend of the hook. Next, we're going to want to pull out some dry fly dubbing. Common colors for this fly are orange, brown, black, green, and in this case, yellow. But use whatever you want. You don't really need a lot here. A light whisk will do. So you want to dub a thin and tight noodle onto your thread, but make it fairly long, maybe about three to four inches. If you need to pluck more dubbing, then do so. Push the noodle up towards the hook, and then begin wrapping it up the hook shank. For most flies, I would make a pronounced taper here, but with this fly, it really is not needed. Just make the dubbing even and as smooth as possible. Now, you can begin taking even spiral wraps up the dubbing with your hackle. But making one turn on the bare hook shank before spiraling up the dubbing will help align the first wrap. Try making these spirals as even as possible, as it will create a ribbing for the abdomen. So I find that if you capture the hackle while holding the hackle out about 45 degrees from the hook shank, and capturing it on a bare hook, it will help keep those pesky trap fibers at bay. After capturing it with one wrap, then pull the fibers rearward and make a few wraps in front of your hackle. Then go back and wrap on top of the hackle again to secure it tightly. Trim off the waist hackle now. And if your feather is long enough, you could use it for another fly or two, so don't throw away that feather. Also now is a good time to trim off any of the trapped hackle fibers pointing forward or over the eye. Then pull all the fibers rearward and make a few wraps back on top of the feather slightly to lock everything in tight. Now take some straight scissors and make an angle cut on top of the fly, creating sort of a ramp for the elk hair. You don't need much elk hair, just a small amount for this fly works. Snip your bunch off close to the hide, then pinch the tip of the bunch and clean off any extra hair. Using a fine tooth comb really helps remove any under fur as well, which is really important to do. Also, you're gonna to wanna to stack the hair to align the tip square. I find using a small hair stacker like this one made by Stone Foe really helps me with these smaller patterns. I can't overload the stacker, so it helps me keep the bunch small and to the correct thickness. As you can see, the tips are now aligned. Measure your clump to extend about a half a hook shank length past the curve of the hook. Then transfer that measurement to your other hand. Tie the clump in on top of the hook at that measurement. We are using a very fine thread here, so you must be careful doing this step. Make two loose wraps, then tightening slightly, but not too much or you'll break the thread or cut the elk hair. Then make a wrap and tighten slightly, another wrap and tighten, and keep doing this until your hair is flared. Then I like to weave the thread through the elk hair and tighten. Then weave through a little further down and tighten again. This will ensure that the hair doesn't spin off the top of the hook, like I'm sure you've seen happen before. Now, pull all the hair up and back, then make a few wraps under the hair to help dam it up. This is a difficult fly to cement, so I like painting some head cement onto my thread and then whip finishing the cement into the head of the fly. Okay, now for the tricky part. Pull all the butt pieces up and try to separate them from the tips. Then pull them out forward and try to make sure all the pieces are together and in a nice tight bunch. Then use your hook eye as a guide and make an even cut with straight scissors to remove the waste. If you do this correctly, you'll be left with a nice little square head like so. And if there's any errant elk hairs, you can pluck them with your fingers or with some hackle pliers. Now I'm sure you're going to be able to tie this without any trapped hackle fibers on your whip finish like I had. But if you do, it won't really affect the way that this fly is fished, and you'll still be able to catch fish on it just as well as one tied perfectly. 
Well, thanks for watching. And I want to let you know again that I listed all the materials in the description section of this video. But you might have to click the Show More button to expand this section to be able to view it. I have also included links to the Fly Artist for these products, and a discount code for you as a thank you for being my subscriber. I will see you on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.